Hello, welcome back to 3D Draw and Female Railway. Today's lesson we're going to continue with the DTS 62 and start looking to add a, a little bit more detail, going over the pictures and just seeing if there's anything we could miss that we could add in to, to improve the model. So the first thing that really stands out to me is this item on the front here. So I'm going to draw this on, see it's going to have a square backing plate. And then I'm going to use the revolve tool to make this shape so that we can get these uh, indents that are on there. So jump into Fusion, going to turn to the front to make sure we're, we're doing the chassis part. So select the radio bus on the chassis. I'm going to create a sketch on the front of the buffer beam. So if we look at this part, you can see how it's just offset slightly from the side of the back of the buffer. Let me just rotate this up slightly and I'm going to create a, I'm going to go for a centre point rectangle. I think something of this sort of shape. And I'm probably going to go, start with two millimetres square to start with and we'll see how that looks. So we define distance. Define distance to the edge of let's try that again. There we go. So I'm going to create a gap there. I'm going to go first, say 0.5, see how that looks. Yeah, probably not far off there. And distance from the bottom needs to come up slightly. I'm going to go for 1.2 there. So you can see how the bottom is slightly down from there. It probably needs to be a little bit higher actually. So let's increase that to 1.5. So now if we look at the height from the top, then we can see where we've got that two millimetre square. So that obviously needs to change slightly, so we need to bring that up a little bit. So we're going to increase this, let's go 2.5 square. And 2.5 there. <clears throat> okay, so that's probably a little bit higher too. 2.3. Yeah, 2.3. A nice distance there, we've got a little gap at the top here, which you can see we've got here. So we'll just extrude this forwards. It doesn't need to come far, we're only maybe 0.25. Because all we're creating is the backing plate. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is get a mid plane for this part. So we're going to use the two sides to enable us to get a mid plane right in the middle there. Okay, and then we're going to draw on that mid plane. Okay, so looking at the shape, we're going to have a vertical face here and then a slight diagonal face to the midpoint and then down. So, going back into fusion, we're going to slice through to the midpoint here. We're going to project that edge on there so we can get the midpoint. So if you just scroll down and find this point, I'm going to come out. So if we have a look at it, can we work out how far? Yeah, it probably comes to this edge of the shank, buffer shank here. It'd be great if we had a picture side on of it. But I don't think it has, and they're all slightly at an angle. So I'm going to come to that this point here. About so it's 0.65, so I'm just going to go for one millimeter. We better Sticking out slightly, probably nobody's going to notice that. Okay, so next thing, it doesn't go quite to the edge, so we've got to come in slightly from the edge and then come out. I'm going to go to 0.65, I think. So coming out 0.65, I'm going to define the distance from the top. It's going to be quite close, so I'm going to go for 0.1. That's going to give us this little gap, but it's pretty close to it. So we've got the midpoint, we've got that point there. We're then going to draw a diagonal line up to the midpoint. Does that midpoint have a flat section? Possibly, but we can draw that with a, just a circle section. It doesn't look flat here, so um, 
I'm going to go with the shape we've got there at the moment. <clears throat> I might just round that corner out slightly. The 0.1, just to round the edge off. And the next thing we need to do is put the two grooves in. So to add those grooves, I'm just going to use the, the circle tool. So the first thing we've got to work out is where they're going to be positioned. So I'm going to put one maybe about there. And I'm going to go for 0, 0.2. And then I'm going to put another one about there and go 0 0.2. And 0 0.2 actually might be a little bit too deep for the picture because they're not particularly deep. But although 0 0.2 is tiny, it might not even print properly. But we can go with that. And Let's define the position. I'm not overly critical where they're going to be. It's just going to be. It's, I'm just going for sort of a look. And then if I need to move them once we've revolved this, then I can do that. But so you can see there, I'm going to use the revolve tool because I just mentioned it. So I'm going to draw that profile and select the, just this part, not two circles. And then and we might actually need to finish the sketch first. So I finish the sketch. Select that profile, and then we use the revolve tool. The axis we're going to select as the midpoint there, and then as I say, you can see it just revolves around. Click on OK. Okay, so looking at this, what do we think? Maybe, maybe these are a little bit too wide. So I'm just going to reduce these down, maybe to 0 0.12. Maybe it's tiny, but. I might, I they might not even print properly, but at least they'll give that impression potentially. Yeah, I'm happier with that, I think. Let's have a quick look where they look like. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. So, to get the, the, the little thing that comes out the, the front here, and there's two ways you can do it. You can either draw a offset plane and then extrude into it. Or I'm going to draw on this back surface. I'm going to use the, the midpoint here. And I'm just going to create a circle. What are we looking at? 0 0.2, I think. And then hold down the left, left mouse button so I can select the profile, right click, extrude. Let's rotate that round so we can see what we're looking at. Then we're going to come out the front. And we need it to join, not cut. And then we just need to work out how far do we want that to stick out. So it doesn't look like it's particularly far. I'm not going to be worried about getting the actual lip on here because A, it's tiny, it won't print. B, um, trying to support that to be able to print it, you know, it's just going to be a nightmare. So yeah, 1.2 is probably a bit too much. 1.1, I think, is going to give us the sort of thing that we're looking for there, I think. Click on OK. So we've got. We've got that part there. Okay, the next thing we need to think about is we need, it's on both ends, so we need to get it down to get one of these down to the other end. So we might need to create that as a new body. So actually just come back in the history to where we draw the blacking plate, tell that to be new body, and then everything beyond that point will create onto that body so it's a separate part. We can then copy and paste let's drag this one down to the other end. Take to the top so we can spin it 180. Now we need to try and line this up.
distance between that line and that line. 0.568, so we need to move across the field. again. That's now 0.445. Okay. Not sure why that happened there. I've got that on both ends so we can now combine what do you want with those two parts okay so the next thing I want to look at is the steps here now if you look at the picture we can see we've got a couple of steps that are in line with the chassis here and we've got two more that come underneath and then obviously the handrails that come up my biggest concern is obviously the position of the lower steps here is right next to the bogey and my concern is obviously when it pivots it's going to be catching the bogey and you see obviously this one is slightly offset inwards so as that bogey turns it's going to be hitting the side of the steps well obviously in the real world it, it's not an issue because the wheel the bogey won't pivot that much but in model terms we're looking to get around the first second third fourth radius turns that's going to be a bit of an issue on these two lower steps. So I think what I'm going to do is just draw the two upper steps and then I'm probably going to leave off the lower ones because I don't think that they're, they're going to be usable and they'll end up, as I say, just in the way too much. If, you, if you're just going to sit this in the siding and never move it, I think you could get away with it. But you know, I'm planning on having this mixed within an engineer's train being towed around. so. If I just draw the two upper ones, you can then see the process. If you want to then go on and do the lower ones yourself, then you know by all means do so. So obviously we can see position of the steps is going to be on the side here. I'm going to be using the chassis part. So if we find the chassis, make sure the radio button's checked. And we're going to create a sketch on the side face of the chassis. If you look at the pitch, you see how it's set on the side of it. So we're just going to create on this profile something's moved there but i don't know what so i'm just going to take it to capture position and then we can try and work out what's moved that all looks like it's in line bogeys look like it could be something it could be this thing that we moved a minute ago so i'm going to work with it at the moment and come, come back to that if i need to okay so i'm going to put the steps in here um size wise they are quite narrow, they're probably what, 18 inches? And they sort of look like they're in the middle between between the things. So I'm gonna go for Yeah, probably for four millimeters I think I'm gonna go with. And we'll constrain lower edge to that line there. Top edge to that line there. And then it wants the distance from the end. Strain that 17.75, and I think that looks reasonably okay there. Okay, um, what do we need to do now? We're going to have the same on the lower edge 4 by 0 0.5, and then we can vertically constrain those two, those two, so they're the same length. And we're going to want a line that comes down there, a line that comes down there, and we're going to have another line which then comes down there. Let me just make some extra. Thank you. I'm going to 
find that distance and left it there as 0.5. The same on this side line comes straight down. Same defined 0.5 again. Okay, and then I want to do another rectangle across. It's going to be 3 by 0.5. And then I'm going to midpoint. So if you zoom in, you can see how I'm midpointing the small line, which is part of this rectangle. I'm going to do that to the larger line, then it'll put it in the middle there. And then I'm going to select these five profiles here and then extrude those forwards, maybe 0.3 millimeters. I'm going to tell that to be a new body. Click on OK. And then the reason I want that to be a new body is I'm now going to pattern that body. And I'm going to put it down this end. So direction is obviously going to be horizontal. Course, make sure we've only got two of them because we want one in the middle. And we're going to try and line that up with what was roughly in the middle there, maybe just a little bit more to the left. That's it. So we've now got in here got those two extra bodies here. And then we can mirror those bodies. That one. Structure plane at the midpoint. So plane number one, we'll put some on the other side, click on OK, and then we can combine body one with those four bodies. And that's those steps done. If you wanted to do the next lower steps, you know, by all means just copy this same process down again. But as I say, I think that's going to be an issue with. The bogey is being there, and specifically this this one I think will be the biggest problem. This one not too much because that's roughly in line with the midpoint. Uh, the concern would obviously be you'd be actually no, it wouldn't work because you've got the springs sitting proud. So yeah, it probably it probably won't work. So I would just do the two upper ones, and they will stand out. You know, it looks different. So the next thing I'm going to add on is this pipe that runs along the length of the body here and obviously the mounting brackets that go with it. So just coming back into Fusion, I'm just going to be drawing again using the chassis part. I'm going to draw a, uh, let's think about this, I'm going to do a, an offset plane from the inside side of the past so chassis here. I'm just going to bring it out by 0.1 millimeters. <coughs> excuse me, and I'm going to draw on Make sure we collect that profile of the plane rather than the side of the chassis. So the pipe, if we look at its starting position, is just slightly in front of the bogies. And I'm not going to draw the bit that goes underneath the chassis. I'm just going to come from the height of this bit up, over and across. So we'll start by just drawing the, the length really. I'm just going to use a line. I'm going to start about where it is. Pretty much where the box is. So we'll start about there, and then it comes across and it goes down into the chassis. Now that goes again to the other end of the bogey. So if we come across that sort of that position there, and if we define the length of that so it doesn't change, we're going to go for 83.35 just to round that up. I'm going to find the length from there to the end of the chassis there, and then we'll go for 5.75. Okay, so now we've got that, <coughs> we're going to again keep on the same sketch for the moment. I'm just going to come to the side slightly for the next part, and that goes along again to the end of the chassis pretty much there. So I'm going to bring that. Bring that to about that position there. 
find the length so it doesn't change. That's 24 millimeters. Um, the distance there, let's go for 1.5 millimeters. Okay, so once we've done that, finish that sketch, and then we're going to no, don't want the roll, that's miss key. We're going to use the pipe tool. If we select the first one here, and it won't allow you to do them two at a time, so you're doing one at a time. I'm going to go for 0.25 millimeters. Let's have a look. That as a join not cut. I wonder whether to make that just a little bit bigger. Maybe go 0.3. Okay, and we need that sketch back on. Back on here. Turn that sketch back on. I'll do the same pipe on that one there. Again, it's automatically picked up 0.3 millimeters. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is create a position that it can loft down to. Um, so we're going to create a sketch on the, sh the bottom of the chassis. It's this end here. So we're going to use on, on the side of the chassis, uh, I'm going to go like this, 0.3 again. See how it's intersecting the chassis there, which is absolutely fine because I don't mind it being cut in half, you won't notice it. And I'm just going to use that profile here and I'm going to extrude that and both halves. I'm going to select that bit for me, please. Thank you. I'm going to extrude. Let's turn around so we can see what we're looking at. Go the other way. I'm just going to rotate it so you can see what's happening. Come up slightly, tell it to initially new body, so the profile is there. Okay, and then we're going to use the loft tool. Will that work? Let's, let's see what happens. No, it won't because that will come diagonal. I need to come up and then round. And then we have another turn here. So we have to create another sketch on a different profile so we're going to create a offset plane from this one and I'm going to go in slightly and so minus 0.25 that's the halfway point of that depression there create a sketch on that profile so it's going to be vertically in line with that and the top one so it's going to be point we're going to project that circle and we're going to project lagging the catch up so I can we'll grab the point there, that's fine. So I'm selecting that geometry there. Okay, and then I want that project that midpoint there if I can get it. Chassis off for a second. Eleven point one, and I won't find it. Okay, so let's see if we can get this to vertically constrain that to that. We won't do this one. It's close enough. Uh, let's turn the body back on. What we can do is dimension from there to there. We knew on the bottom one it's one millimeter. And then if I extrude this symmetrically, and I'm only going to go 0 0.01 thick symmetrically, because all I need is just that circle profile to be able to then go and use the loft tool to go from there to there and I want that to be tangent and tangent there. Click on OK and this one's going to be hard to get hold of. I'm going to try and do loft again. That pro 
Portfolio. Again, we're going to use the tangent curve, that's not like an okay. it's because, probably because of how that joined, let's just edit that, let's cancel that too. If we come back in the profile there, what we can then do is do a loft again, turn off the main body, be able to select that back face and turn the body back on. We can then rotate it to that profile. Oh, what is this lock? Let's get rid of that lock. Okay, let's cancel that. It's going to be a mess. Turn that off. Body back on, select that profile, and then change these to tangent. Oh, it doesn't like doing that. Let's try something else. And that, that is probably because that's not a circle. Okay, so let's just go back in history and find that circle, that pipe here. Edit the feature, turn it into new body, and we'll do the same with this one. Edit the feature, and turn it into new body. Okay, let's try again. So, loft, back face of that, and that face there. Yeah, it was because this was cut off, so it's trying to squeeze the, the shape. So we've got that now tangently curved round. If we come back forwards in the history, then we'll get the downpipe coming in as well. Okay. So now we've got two separate bodies. We can come and join these again in a little bit. Um, let's just have a look and see that one. Yeah, edit that feature. And we're going to tell that to be a new body as well. Okay, turn the body one back on. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is mirror this on the other side of that body here. So if we have joined that lock, we don't want that. Edit that. So that's a new body. Okay, so we want to turn that one off. So that's 24. You'll find a mid plane of this, selecting that face, that face, click on OK. So we've got that midpoint now, the mid plane. We can turn that body back on, and then we can mirror all those bodies across. So select mirror, we're going to want that body, that curved body. We don't want the one that goes along. 19 is part of the curved one, 20 is what we want, 22 is the other pipe, so we don't need that. Mirror plane will be that one there, the midpoint of this pipe. Click on OK, and you can see that that's now put that on the other side here. So we've now got that, that curved pipe section there. Okay, so you can turn off that plane, so let's close all this lot down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine, in a second I'll combine all those bodies. First of all, what I'm going to do is actually copy these down, see if we can get them to copy. Okay. Um, so let's go with pattern bodies. So we need to select don't want to that one. We've got bodies 20, 19, 24, and 23. Direction, we're going to come 
a long chassis. So sideways, we need two of them. I'm going to just drag this along. I'm going to have to make this pipe a bit short actually. See how they're overlapping slightly there. We want to try and get them as close to the end as possible. Twenty-five point eight three. Okay, so this pipe here needs to be a bit shorter. So if we come back into the sketch for the pipe, I'm just going to make that twenty-three point five. Okay, because we've got the mid plane down the middle of this, it'll be fine with the two ends. That will come down okay. Yep. Have a look at the picture. They need a bit more gap between them. So to achieve that, I'm going to actually change this pipe now as well. Edit. That sketch. It's not the right one, is it? No, it's not. That one. I'm going to make that 82.5. Finish. Okay, we need to move this across as well now. So we're going to just use the tool we were using before, pattern then, and move this in. 26.7. Okay, so now we've got that curve coming down. I don't mind the little overlap there because you won't notice it at the time it's printed. Okay, we need to copy this one now. So again we're patterning and we're looking for all these parts. So it's got to scroll down these for when you see when you hover over them they highlight on here so you see that one's highlighted so select that holding shift down that one that one and that one so we select the four parts there which are part of this section direction going along there's going to be two of them I'm going to overlap it slightly, 85.6. Once we've done all that, we can then just combine all these slots. So we'll keep body one as the target body, and then all the rest of this slot we can use as the tool bodies. Just hold down shift to allow yourself to select them all. Click on OK. And we've got that pipe that goes along the body as we want it. So we'll turn the sketch off. Close it down. You can see how we've now achieved, achieved that pipe. It'll print, but because it's attached to the back of here, so that's why you, you're able to get the support that you need to be able to print that. Um, it will obviously be difficult to paint, but you know it's something that you've added that little bit extra detail in there. How well it'll print because it's quite small and quite close in here. That you might end up with a little bit of resin uh, just sitting inside the, the flat part here, and it sort of masks or hides it. But we've made an effort to draw it on, and I think it looks okay. So the next part of it we can draw is the mounting points. So we've got one, two, three, four, five on this first section of pipe. So if we scroll down here, it's just as simple as drawing a little rectangle, I think, really, to represent that. So again, create a sketch on the back plane here. Use the center point rectangle tool. And we can find what is roughly the midpoint of this. It doesn't need to be exact. I'm going to go for 0.3 wide and 0.7 high. And I'm going to select profiles here. Let's go on the pipe. Holding shift down, holding the mouse button down to get the profile, and select that profile, and then extruding it out over the top of the pipe. Is it? Now that I've got it on, I'm happy with how it looks. I'm just going to define its position. So if we go back into the sketch, define that position there. It's going to be 0.5 high. And on the end, I'm going to do the first one 2.2. Okay, so now we need to copy this feature. 
as we said, we've got five of them. So we do pattern, select the feature, bodies, select the feature there, direction, and we need five. And we're just going to drag it along. They're all pretty evenly spaced. I'm not going to be too precious about that because I'm not going to measure it. So we need a little bit of gap down this end here. Let's just have a look here. So we're going to have 22.3. I'm now going to copy the original one and I'm going to move it down to this part here. So again, move in the direction, put the one of them, and I'm going to place that 26.5, so it's just coming to this position here. Okay, and now I need to work out how many there is that goes along this pipe. So one, two, three, four, five, that's in line with this box. Six, seven, eight, nine, that's in line with the light there. 10, 11, 12, 13. So unlucky for some, so we'll select features, we'll select that pattern that we've just done. Direction across, we need 13 of them. And then we're going to drag it across the last ones just before the curve here. So 81.3, I'm doing there. Okay, you see they're all joining to the same body here. And that's given us that effect coming along that we've seen on the picture here. Okay, it might need to actually come up a little bit, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that. I think. I think it looks reasonably good there. So yeah, happy with that. So this lesson's starting to get a little bit on the the long side so I'm going to leave it where it is at the moment we've added the detail on here with the, the torn or siren or whatever it is uh, the pipe coming along and the uh, steps on both sides there. so hope you've enjoyed that uh, next lesson again we're going to continue looking for more and more details to add on to this just to turn this into you know, slightly slightly more improved model than what we've got at the moment so thanks for watching